Now let's talk about fixed mount radios. Fixed mount radios have a number of advantages over handhelds. The first is, since they're tied to the ship's battery, they can transmit or receive for as long as your battery is charged. So there's no real time limit to their use. The second thing is that they use an externally mounted antenna. Now this antenna could be sort of right at eye level or maybe on a T-top, or it could be at the top of a sailboat's mast. The range that a VHF can transmit is related to the height of the antenna. The higher the antenna, the further it can transmit. So a, a fixed mount VHF radio with its greater power, 25 watts, and higher antenna height might be able to communicate for 25 or 30 miles, or in some conditions possibly as high as 60 miles. And of course, if it's transmitting to another station that also has a high antenna, you get sort of an additive effect. So what features should you look for in a fixed mount VHF radio? Well, since they're regulated by the FCC, fixed mount VHF radios have a lot of the very similar features. So for example, there really isn't a difference between the transmit power of one radio over the other. Every, every one of these VHF radios will have a minimum transmit power of 1 watt and a maximum transmit power of 25 watts. The second thing is that they all have pretty much the same channels. They have three different channel bands, one for international uh, use, one for Canadian use, and one for United States use. So you'll have an indicator on the front of the device that says U, I, or C, and you generally for the United States would choose U. So that gives you roughly 55 channels. I should point out that because you're a recreational boater, you don't get to use all 55 channels. You can listen to any of them, but you can only transmit on maybe 12 or 15 of those channels because the other ones are reserved for commercial or military use. So some of the features that you'll look for. Each one will have a push-to-talk microphone on a coily cord like this. And some microphones will have additional buttons on them so that you can either change the transmit power of the radio, or you can change the channel, or you can choose channel 16. This is really a good feature because it's nice to be able to change from whatever channel you're on to channel 16 without actually having to grab the radio. This is especially true on a boat where you're holding onto the steering wheel with one hand and you're trying to use the radio with the other hand. All radios will have some means of changing the channel either by a series of push buttons where you can push the up button or the down button to go up through the list of channels or they'll have a rotary knob. Some people prefer one over the other. You might have a personal preference. All radios will have a volume control which usually turns the radio on and off and they'll have a squelch control. The squelch control is a way of eliminating unnecessary noise. So instead of hearing static all the time, you can turn the squelch control until the radio is quiet, until somebody transmits and tries to call you. All radios will have a 1 and 25 watt selector so that you can transmit at low power or high power. And finally, all radios in the US now have a function called digital selective calling. Digital selective calling means that you can transmit certain information digitally between vessels which reduces the length of the transmission and can also send digital information about your boat. Digital selective calling allows you to do a variety of functions and frankly most people will never use it for all the different functions that it provides. But as an example, you can request the position of a friend's boat and have it transmitted to you. You can send your position to a single boat or to a variety of boats and so forth. But the function that we think is most important is the ability to send out a Mayday uh, message using digital selective calling. So here's how it works. It requires a DSC equipped radio, which all of them now are if you buy a new radio. You need to connect your radio to a GPS receiver using its normal data interconnection cable going to the NEMA 0183 connection. And then you have to have the GPS on and you also have to have an MMSI number which allows you to identify your vessel, certain sort of like your uh, state registration numbers or your documentation number. So this number allows the Coast Guard to look you up in a database and know exactly who you are. To use digital selective calling, we'd establish that we're in a true life-threatening emergency, not just like I want uh, the weather information or I want to chat with somebody. You flip up one of these little panels, push on the button, and it will transmit on channel 70 your latitude and longitude, your MMSI number, 
and then it will revert to channel 16 so that you can talk using voice to whomever responds to you. Of course, the group that you want to listen to you the most is the United States Coast Guard. And with the Coast Guard's new Rescue 21 system, which is a series of communication stations around the outside of the continental United States, major rivers, and the Great Lakes, it allows the Coast Guard to triangulate on where you are by listening with multiple antennas. But more importantly, if you've got a DSC equipped radio and you transmit your latitude and longitude, they know exactly where you are. So if you need a helicopter to come and rescue you, or possibly a, a patrol boat, they can send it directly to your position. And you don't even have to know how to use your GPS, it just has to be on and connected to your radio. There are three features you might want to look for as you uh, choose your VHF radio. The first is the option of using a loud hailer. A loud hailer is like a big speaker that you put on the exterior of your vessel and when you key the mic instead of transmitting on your radio you transmit through the speaker so you can send your voice. So for example if you're coming into a dock and you want to have somebody help you with the lines you can get on it and ask for help. The second feature is a remote second station. Many of these radios, especially the slightly higher priced ones, have the option of hooking up an external second station to it. And this generally looks like a big microphone. ICOM has their version of this, Standard Horizon has their version of this, and so forth. Now these big microphones have full controls on them so that you can change the channel, you can make a DSC call, you can change the volume, and so forth. So if you have a sailboat in particular, or a powerboat that has two helm stations, it allows you to use one radio, but to use the, the same radio in two different locations. The third feature you may want to consider is the integration of AIS, or Automatic Information Systems, into the radio. Some of the standard Horizon radios have a built-in AIS receiver and an AIS display. What this allows you to do is to see the position of commercial vessels that are operating in your vicinity. Those vessels transmit on VHF frequencies information about their movements, the vessel speed, the latitude and longitude, the vessel name, and so forth. That information is received by the standard horizon radios and it's displayed on a compact liquid crystal display. So instead of having to buy a separate AIS receiver and an AIS display, you get all of this integrated into the radio at a great price. <clears throat> Here's an example of one of the standard horizon radios. You can see this circular plot here. That's like a radar display of where other vessels are around you and you can press here and change the range of the radio uh, to various uh, distances away and that allows you to see vessels in your vicinity as little icons and then you can actually identify the icon and figure out which vessel it is. The nice thing about this is that it makes it possible to identify a radio and call them if you think the potential of a collision exists.